It takes a long range to be a main planer. You gotta keep it real. You gotta keep it cool. When you're an urban spaceman, there are certain techniques one has to apply to your psychology in order to benefit the mission. Now, this knowledge doesn't come easily. It comes with years of exposure to experience in the field of time. Time, as you know, is the very cradle of our consciousness. And if you feel that and love that and want that to develop and blossom in a happy, happy, eternal destiny of many wonders, well, then you need to become like an urban spaceman. You need to see the glory of living in the intelligent genius of modern humanity as a collective with all its municipal properties of scientific and religious discoveries and realize the future is you. And whatever you're good at, whatever you're really good at, will become your strength. And you get better at that, and you practice that, and you master that, and you get so good at whatever you're good at, everyone will be amazed. I've seen so many examples of this in history. So, logically, scientifically, one might argue that the essence of humanity is just to do what you love doing. But do it like you're awesome. And just do it. Do it. Don't be afraid. For God's sakes, don't be afraid. The pathway of terror and cowards is one to damnation. No, come back. You must be very, very brave. There are things out there that no one wants to see. No one wants to know. No one wants to fall in love with. And no one wants to hang out with. But we must continue, we must brave on through this bitterness of sufferance for all these freaks and hoodlums and wonderments of creation and realize the essence to actuality is just bubbling along with these incredibly weird people. I include Islam in that, you know, and, and the Chinese. You know. And others, I think you're all weird, very strange, very strange people, always and often, I think is the term, very peculiar, you're all completely potty in weird little idiosyncrasies, but I include myself, you know, it's because I know myself, I know you, you see what I'm saying? I've looked deep within, and thus, when I look without, I see similar properties quite often, especially on TV, in conscious shades of realization. And I know we're not stupid. We're not, not well. What is stupid? We're not stupid. For mortals, we're not stupid. For angels, we're very stupid. And for God, we're just like, oh, jeez. <coughs> but actually, if you really think about it, humanity is very smart, given what we're up against. And you're allowed to fuck up if you're smart. You're allowed to make mistakes. But you've got to keep trying to be good and smart. Because, well, life is very serious, really. Or is it, is it joyful? Is it resonance? I think it's a joyful resonance. But there is severity to that. You can't go around being naughty or, or doing the wrong thing. That won't work. It just leads to trouble. Right? That, there's the lesson. I do, I do this. Oh no, I'm in trouble. Oh bosh. Oh no. And then if you keep doing that, it's just stupid. Really. 
No, no, the way, the way around it is sheer talent, skill, ability, and life, and, and the power to be awesome. Now, I have hugely lost that power in part, thanks to my folly of youth. But I can tell you now, God wants you to be awesome, all of you. We don't know what the future might hold, although we have clues if you're studious. But we don't know it entirely, no one does. No one knows the next panty five minutes. But you do well, you plan well, you are smart. And you're very bright. And you're fun. So come on. Back to Urban Space Force. For missions and debriefings. Into new discoveries. Yeah. And that's how I have fun. Basically. Basically that's the way. That's the way. I try to make films that might be inspiring, innocent, pure, funny, witty, clever, jovial, empathic, amusing. But sometimes it involves putting on crash helmets so that you look authentic for the part of a spaceman. Um, that's just attention to detail. Okay. So, lovely chat everybody, uh, keep being young, because I remember the words of the Bible where Jesus said, truly I say unto you, unless you become like little children, you shall never enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and this talk, this spoke a lot to me as a, as a man reading the Bible, as much of the words of the Bible does. In fact, I'm deluged with knowledge of the Bible. I can't move for the prophecies of the kingdom come in Jesus Christ to turn it all men and all these things which come with being blessed by God with knowledge of the word. But in a secular community it results in often a somewhat isolated experience. And is that desired? Is that desired? I don't know, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And the problem we have is that if loneliness, well I don't get lonely, that's the point, I have God. But I'm also isolated. I would like, thinking about it, perhaps, the company of other people once in a while. But do I, because generally people breed drama, as I've seen on a few occasions. However, I don't think anything is too sad. I think there's a lot to live for. I think there's epic light daily from the cosmos and the universe shining down its gilded photons like radiant probe knowledge of divinity. Wow. And the films of Marvel, I think, I don't like Scorsese films, but I do like Marvel films. I'm staying with Marvel. That's all I'm saying. And that was the point of saying this. There had to be a resolution, there had to be a finality, there had to be a point to this dexterity of cinematic oratory. And thus, I believe I have proven, given my thoughts on this grave, grave matter of Scorsese's hubris and bias and arrogance and ignorance against the superhuman form of filmmaking, well, I say I don't think Martin Scorsese knows the very essence of cinema. He simply spills horror before our eyes with no real lovely solutions and certainly no superpowers. Now, I'm not saying I have superpowers like those you see in the films, but I'm just saying I resonate more with superhuman films than I do with Martin Scorsese films, which I find grim, turgid, 
ugly, depressing, morbidly woeful and tiresome, frankly. And I'm sorry, I'm sure you do consult yourself as a great Catholic, but I'm sure there's a Catholic somewhere working in Marvel. In fact, I think that, well, the X-Men. What does that say? That's like the Christian men with their supernatural powers of God. Right? It makes so much sense if you're holy. I understand the whole thing of the X-Men to some extent. Not the mind you shy, don't bring me up on detail. But I get the story and I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. And the Avengers, they're good too, but I think the X-Men slightly take him, even though some of the Avengers films are better than some of the X-Men films. But as an allegory for special people trained at great schools with awesome knowledge and technology and abilities, I think the X-Men and Avengers films are fantastic, fantastic stories. Much better than Gribbly Gribbly Walnut on the Scorsese Wallbangers. I think, personally, it's just my view. Um, Robert De Niro always scared me as a child until he was in Meet the Fockers and then I fell in love with him, finally. So there we are. That's the story of the day and I hope you enjoyed my little solipsism of oratory in my soliloquy to the stars of the United States and England and France and all the allied countries in United Antonia. There are more than just us, but they're the ones I feel closely to my bond this night as a redolent atmosphere of love. And in that, I say strong. And I trust you say strong too. For we will get through Eternia when we believe.